it's nothing new But it's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to my summer ween vlog. This is going to look a little different from most of my vlogs because I am not at home. I am not in the United States. I am actually coming at you from Berlin, Germany. I am here for a work trip this week. It just so happens to perfectly coincide with summer ween. So I thought I would do a fun little combination summer ween travel vlog because I should have some time to get some reading in and can hopefully show you a cool city. So that is my plan. I just got in. Today is Monday, July 10th. So I am a few days late in starting this vlog. Summer Ween started a couple of days ago and I think it ends on the 13th but my trip ends on the 14th so I'm just going to extend it at least that extra day so that I can get this entire trip in. But so far I have just flown here. I left yesterday Sunday at 1 30 p.m US time and landed here at about noon on Monday Berlin time. So like a full 24 hours has almost passed, although it was something like I think 16 hours of travel. And in order to not fall asleep because of the jet lag, I need to get out and about and not spend too much time here in my hotel room. My actual work stuff doesn't start until tomorrow morning and I don't think any of my other team members are here yet. So I do have the afternoon kind of to myself to explore. Our hotel is in like a city center downtown type area. So there are a few things in walking distance. Of course, the first thing I did when I got here was search bookstores nearby and there do seem to be a lot and one of them about half a mile away looks really really cool so I think that's gonna be my mission is walk to a few bookstores see what else I find along the way I'll probably be looking for like souvenirs for my children and stuff like that because this is my free afternoon to just spend the day in the city and do some touristy stuff so that's what I'm gonna do. Of course, I'm gonna bring my phone and my audiobooks. So to shift it to summer ween focus, let's talk about what I'm hoping to read this week. On my flight here in my travel, I have been listening to The Ferryman by Justin Cronin, which doesn't really work as a summer ween pick. It's more of a dystopian type book and I'm reading it for my friend Gwen's Patreon. She does a summer buddy read every year and this is the book she chose. The book is quite long. I think the audiobook is like 20 hours. So I've been slowly chipping away at that and I got a good chunk of that read throughout yesterday and today. So I think I'm going to take a break from that and get started on something a little bit more appropriate for this readathon. So most of the prompts I don't think I will hit with the books. The one I think I can hit is a book with orange or black on the cover. And thanks to Libro, I have a copy of What Remains by Wendy Walker, which appears to be a pretty standard mystery thriller. I think it's following a detective and looking at the synopsis, this might be a little bit slower paced than what I need right now. Again, I need something that's gonna keep me awake. So another book that I had my eye on for this week was Drowning by TJ Newman, which I also have a copy of thanks to Libro and their ALC program. But this one I believe is about a plane that crashes into an ocean and it's like a survival thriller type story. The audiobook is less than eight hours long so I can knock this one out pretty easily. So I think that's what I'm going to pop on as I am doing my shopping sightseeing this afternoon. So let's go ahead and get into that. I will bring you along with me. We'll see what we see and the next time I check in I should have a reading update as well as an update on how the trip is going so far. I can't believe you love me
All right, I'm back. It's a few hours later. It's been a good time. I'm feeling very tired now. I was laying on this bed and then I realized that's a very bad idea. So I thought I would update the vlog and then I'm gonna have to go back out or else I'm gonna fall asleep at 4.30 p.m. And we can't have that. But let me show you the little haul that I got from the bookstore. That bookstore that I went to was incredible. Four stories tall, really big. They had a whole English section for books published in the English language. Some of them had like UK European covers, which I always love seeing in different countries. And then of course they also had an entire huge like German section of books published in German. They also had an international section of books published in other languages. They had a huge kids section. It was a really cool place. So one thing that I've started doing now that I do a little bit more international traveling through work, I would like to do some personally too, but um, I think it would be really fun to start collecting books from the places I go as kind of my souvenirs. When I was in Spain last year, I got um, a couple of Spanish versions of some of my favorite books. And then I also got, um, I think a European cover of Sundial by Katrina Ward, which I hadn't read at that time. I just got it because that cover edition was really pretty. So I thought I would kind of follow suit here. So the first thing I got is a German version of one of my favorite books. So I got Verity by Colleen Hoover. And I was honestly looking for something else. I don't necessarily want to collect Colleen Hoover books in different languages. I got All Your Perfects in Spanish, but Colleen Hoover is obviously such a widely popular author that almost every book of hers is published in almost every language. And I thought this cover was really pretty. I love the spine. It's super thick for what the book is. And it's in German, which I don't think I'll ever be able to read, but it's kind of fun to have as a German souvenir. And then this bookstore also had a really cool section within the English section. They had books set in Berlin, but written in English. So I got this book called Murder in Berlin by Christina Koning. This does appear to be part of a series, but I think it's one of those detective type series where it's one detective solving a bunch of different cases that are all independent of each other. They just have the one same detective, if you know what I mean. So it could be read as a standalone. And this is set in Berlin. It's actually following a blind detective, which I thought was a really cool spin on that. I don't know if I've ever read any books with a blind main character, let alone a blind detective. So that sounds like an interesting perspective. Plus pretty cool that it's set in Berlin. Other books in the series, it looks like there is a book called The Blind Detective and then there's Murder in Regent's Park, Murder at Hendon Aerodrome, Murder in Berlin, Murder in Cambridge, Murder in Barcelona, and Murder in Dublin. So another kind of cool memento and uh, souvenir to have from Berlin. And again, I like the spine orange color. I did do some shopping in the kids section. I wasn't necessarily going to buy them books this time just because books written in another language for kids is kind of fun in theory, but also once they get to reading age, they're not gonna be able to read it. But then I realized that L-O-W-E, Lo is lion in German. And if you didn't know, my son's name is Lo, spelled L-O-W-E. I, for some reason, did not know that it meant lion. But then as I was in the kids section, I started seeing his name everywhere <laughs> uh, on books about lions. And I was like, okay, but that is cool. So I got this big book that will probably be more of like a decoration. It's not necessarily a book that we'll ever read together, but what a cool little discovery. And then it is like a German meaningful kind of memory, but also cool that it's his name. So I got that. And then I also got the kids just some other things just so I can have some like gifts to bring them when I get home. I got them this little set of puzzles. I don't think it has any words or anything on it, which is honestly kind of preferred. I like the memory that I got it for them in Germany, but it doesn't have to be something super difficult or like they're not going to be able to do it without us understanding German. It just looks like a bunch of like little animal puzzles, which I know they will like. And then there was a section of really cool recycled kids bags. So I got each of my kids a little fanny pack. Um, Chrissa's has like suns and rainbows on it and Lowe's has little planets. They love bags, Chrissa especially. She has a bunch of purses and backpacks and I thought like a little fanny pack would be a cute little 
trendy but uh, functional little gift for them that I know they'll have fun opening and using. And then the last thing that I stopped to get, I stopped at an Aldi, a grocery store, to get a couple of bottles of water to have in my hotel room just so I can stay hydrated. Um, and I'm not sure how easy water is going to be able to find to like refill my actual water bottle. So I got it cheaper at the grocery store than I would be able to get at the hotel. And then I got some chocolate. Uh, Kinder chocolate is my favorite European chocolate brand. I love, love, love Kinder eggs. I didn't see any at this grocery store, so I'm gonna have to keep my eye open for that, but I did get this Kinder cards type of like chocolate cracker looking thing. And then also this Biscotto chocolate little waffle wafer thing. So I will save these for me and my family to eat once we get home. But chocolate and candy is also a really easy kind of souvenir, but also just thing to bring home to my husband and kids that I know they will enjoy. On the book front, this is kind of a long update, but I did get 35% into Drowning and I'm enjoying it so far. This is very much so like an action movie type of book. I can so vividly picture this being a movie like Poseidon is about a cruise ship that drowns. So not quite the same thing, but this is about an airplane that right after takeoff, they experience issues with their engine, things catch on fire and they immediately crash into the ocean. Things go haywire, um, a lot of people die pretty early on and then we're just following what happens. We're following the people in the plane trying to survive and then we're also following people outside the plane trying to organize a rescue mission. And it's good, it's fast paced. I'm interested to see who else survives and what actually happens. I'm glad it's a quick read. And so I'm gonna try to finish that Honestly, maybe by the end of today, I'm not sure what I'll be doing the rest of the evening if I end up meeting up with other people on my team for dinner or what. If it's just me, then I'll have a lot more time for audiobook listening and I will want to use that to, again, keep me awake because I should stay up for a few more hours before going to bed. But yeah, I'm gonna get on with my evening. I will be back with another update once I have it. But so far, this first day in Berlin is really good. Right, hello, it is day two of my trip, Tuesday morning, and it is 7.45 a.m. I'm about to go eat breakfast and then go to the first day of our workshop that I'm here for. Wanted to check in because I am 75% of the way through drowning and I have an hour left of the audiobook at the speed that I'm listening at. And most of my thoughts from earlier still stand, generally enjoying it. Definitely don't listen to this book if you don't like like watching movies or reading books where you fall in love with characters and then they die. This is just a very realistic book in the sense of like throughout a tragedy like this, there are many moments of danger and many moments when people can mess up or an accident happens or a freak thing happens and somebody dies. And it's very emotional, although it has to keep the pace moving even after that. So it doesn't spend that much time mourning the loss of who you lose, so. <laughs> I still do think this would make a really good movie, or if not a great movie, one of those movies that's just, you know, high action and interesting for an hour and a half and just a kind of a fun ride or a wild ride. I always like knowing that this author was a former flight attendant. Not that she's been in this exact type of situation, but you know she's seen things. You know she's had to deal with um, annoying customers, people who think that they're right, people who probably think they know the plane and flying better than she does. And in this situation, there is a flight attendant who, you know, thinks she knows certain protocols and she has to try and make decisions, but other people are trying to talk over her. And that part's just interesting, knowing that that's probably coming from real life and just things in general about knowing where things are on the plane and all of that, I think is interesting coming from a former flight attendant. So again, so far so good. I probably won't have a chance to check in until way later tonight after dinner and everything. I don't know if I'll actually be able to listen to this book anymore before I get back to the hotel room tonight, but either way, I will check in a lot later. I'll let you know how it's going, and I'll see you then. Yes. 
Hello, here with an update. Obviously, I am at home, so some time has passed. Summerween is officially over. My travels are officially over. I haven't updated you in quite some time, so let's go ahead and do that. Long story short, the week just got really busy with work stuff and then going out after the work stuff and then trying to remain rested. <laughs> and as far as the travel home goes, I just never had a good time to stop and update the vlog because I was in airports and on airplanes. And speaking of airplane, you might be able to hear one now. But um, yeah, I didn't have a lot of time to update the vlog. However, I did do quite a bit more reading. So I have some updates to give you, but as kind of a wrap up on the travel portion, the trip was great, Berlin was great. I really enjoyed it. It was the perfect amount of time. Uh, this time I was in Europe for only five days, which is a good amount of time to like become accustomed to the time zone, to get to know the area that I was in, to try a lot of different, you know, restaurants and bars and things, but not too long for me as someone who has two young children, a family that I was missing, you know, five days doesn't feel like forever. So I was ready to come home after the five days, but it felt like a good amount of time. And so I'm happy to be home now. I got the weekend to recoup, catch back up on sleep, and now we are into the next work week and I'm ready to wrap up this vlog. So first things first, I don't think I ever gave a final update on drowning and I did end up giving this book four stars. I don't think I have too much to add to my thoughts on it. It's just a good, fun, action-y thriller. I do think I liked this one more than Falling, which is this author's previous book and only other book that she's written. I think the reason I liked this one more is it's just a little bit more straightforward in that there's no bad guy. There's no secrets being held. There's no motives you're trying to figure out. It's just this group of characters that are in this situation to no fault of their own and they're all on the same team trying to get out. And the conflict comes more from the physical challenges that they're facing and the can they escape the situation they're in in time, as well as a few instances of some conflicting ideas of like what's feasible, what's gonna work to get them out. They don't have time to try everything. They don't necessarily have time to completely flush out the ideas they have but it's a risk to do certain things. So there are some conflicting personalities, but at the end of the day, everyone is trying to get these people out of this trapped underwater airplane. And from time to time, I really like that. It's just really focused on the action. And then also you can wholeheartedly like support the characters. You know, sometimes in thrillers, there are morally gray characters, or you don't know if people are good guys or bad guys, which is also fun in its own right. But it's also fun, I think sometimes to just be able to fall in love with characters and know that they are good natured, good hearted. And I will again stress that this book breaks your heart a little bit. There are some really tough moments losing some characters that you do become connected to. There were some moments that I teared up during this book, which is very uncommon for a thriller, I would say, for me. And I really liked it. It's not life-changing, so I didn't give it five stars, but it was pretty solid in my opinion, if that's the type of book that you're looking for. And then my other update is on the plane ride home, which was a good old 10 hour plane ride. I watched like four movies and I read the entirety of What Remains by Wendy Walker. This is about our main character who is a woman who is a police officer or a detective. And one day she's like at a store or at a mall or something and she hears a shooter. She goes and guns him down and she's basically a hero. She saved a whole bunch of people. And then she becomes connected with one of the guys who is also on the scene. She wants to talk to him because she wants to kind of work through some of the guilty feelings she has. She doesn't know if she did exactly the right thing and she wants some validation from someone else who was there. And then this guy that she's talking to starts to get this really weird like infatuation with her, basically starts stalking her and it goes from there. I really liked this book too. It reminded me a lot of Karen Slaughter's books that I've read, specifically Pieces of Her. Because it does have that police officer element of it, you have someone who is highly trained in like combat and in 
fighting bad guys <laughs> for lack of a better expression. I like reading from that point of view sometimes and it was also just an intriguing situation of like who is this guy? Why is he so obsessed with her? What does he want? And how is she going to make sure to keep herself and her family safe? I also don't think I have anything too profound to say about this book because it is just a fast thriller but it was good. It had a few different um, kind of like midpoint twists or things that are revealed incrementally that I thought were really interesting. I didn't read too much into the synopsis before starting it and I think that added to my enjoyment. Maybe if you knew exactly the few things that were going to happen going into it, it wouldn't be as fun, but I really didn't know anything. I hadn't heard anybody talk about this book, so I liked it. I also haven't read anything else by Wendy Walker. I know she has at least one other popular book. Emma in the Night I think I've heard generally good things about and I recognized the cover of The Night Before. But because I enjoyed this one I definitely would be willing to pick up more by this author in the future. I want to give a shout out to Libro FM because they actually provided the audiobooks of both of these two books that I read in this vlog for free through their ALC program which is advanced listener copies for book influencers and Drowning I probably would have read on my own. I was already interested in it but What Remains I probably wouldn't have ever picked this one up because again I haven't heard anything about it. I had no other reason to pick it up other than it was available and it had an orange cover to match one of the prompts of Summerween but I'm glad that I read it and again I would recommend it to fans of Karen Slaughter. So with that, that is really all that I have for this vlog. A little bit chaotic, probably a little bit different than this would have looked had I not been traveling this week, but I still had a good time overall and I'm glad I was able to participate in some capacity. I've had a lot of fun so far watching other people's vlogs from Summerween, so hopefully people are not sick of them by the time I put this out. But let me know if you participated in Summerween. What did you read? What did you think? We are now getting to that time where it's almost getting close to fall time. And I know that the spooky girlies are gonna start going a little crazy. But yeah, other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Still can't